gentlemen, welcome to this uh, 13th in the series of Coffee with the Bar. And uh, this evening we have uh, something that we believe is uh, truly special for all of you, mostly uh, comprising of lawyers and uh, chartered accountants. Court Hall number two in the Madras High Court. Uh, it's a remarkably beautiful, and this space, this balcony or veranda has been made famous by a unique group of uh, environmental polluters uh, who had this fantastic ability to make fire with tobacco. And uh, this particular space on the northern side of court hall number two was used exclusively by the select brand who used to go outside for five minutes after every one hour. And uh, inside court hall number two, we've had some terrific benches. Uh, even from the time that I have enrolled, we've had some terrific benches and we've had some really interesting benches, some uh, really terrific cases. And we've had judges who've uh, been uh, achievers, judges whose accomplishments run a page long to their credit. And uh, a few examples of these are uh, probably M. Srinivasan, uh, Justice Sirpurkar, and Justice Mukhopadhyaya. All these were, uh, they had different qualities. Some of them were sheer intellectual, some of them were human, some of them were patient, some of them were very encouraging of juniors. But here is a slightly unusual person who's got three or four professional degrees, of which Chartered accountancy is one. I mean, imagine a judge with uh, chartered accountancy as one of his basic professional degrees. To give you an idea of how tough chartered accountancy is, the, in Madras or in Chennai, the Institute of Chartered Accountants is uh, faced with a church, a pretty old church, which is around 70, 80 years old. And on I do not know whether this is a real thing or it's just a joke. Uh, there are a lot of uh, placards outside the church and one of the placards I believe read, Jesus never fails. So somebody had written there, ask him to try CA. So that is how tough CA is. So apart from this chartered accountancy, this gentleman has also finished his company secretaryship. And uh, not resting on those two laurels, uh, formidable as they are, he did his LLB, not content with LLB, he did his master's in law, and then he did his doctorate in tax laws. An average sportsman is, I believe, is still interested in sports. Uh, a person who's not only a musician, but also uh, interested a lot in music, and a deep involvement and a, a regular follower of this wonderful Jainism. So these six things are probably the six angles or the six points to the star that make him arguably one of the most versatile gentlemen ever mm -hmm. to sit in court hall number two of the Madras High Court. And uh, the owner of all these qualities the answers to the name of Sri Vinit Kothari. Welcome, Sri Vinit Kothari. He's uh, speaking to us from Jodhpur. So, for once, we can proudly say that uh, we in Madras are freezing in cold when Jodhpur is really, really hot. Isn't that so? <laughs> well, yeah, sir. it is very hot, but just now, because of your webinar, it has turned very good season here and uh, almost rains have started out, so I can see that. <laughs> So good domain to begin with Shriram and uh, very happy to join this webinar. I have done so many webinars by now in this COVID times, but this seems to be the best because you gave me a lot of comfort level by saying that we'll talk about law a little less than what about you and the beautiful invite card which you sent to me yesterday and today also again is beautiful. That made a star out of a very ordinary mortal like me <laughs> and uh, people might have but has taken an impression that uh, some star category person they are going to meet. And thanks for giving a very good introduction in the beginning about court hall number two. It's called Canopy Court. I know the day one I sat there, 
people said that in earlier times it used the back door was kept open and sea breeze came from that side and it created some difficulty in listening of the arguments and therefore some this canopy was created and the door was closed those were the times when sea breeze was so close to madras high court building and 150 years old uh, uh, court chartered high court so i feel i was very lucky uh, actually when i was proposed to be transferred from bangalore karnataka high court to allahabad i requested the honorable college members that uh, i have started loving south india in fact all here to transfer me if madras can be an option i would like to go there and next day they were kindly accepted my request and that is how i first entered the portals of madras high court that was my first visit on first day of sitting itself i took oath there and i joined the a pool of such a great talented people there and such a lovely bar i joined there i was very happy and for last one and a half years which i have spent here already with you all the people the my view is now fortified that i am in one of the best high courts of the country and happy to serve here. okay now uh, let's go back to probably your uh, the period in your life when uh, you had just finished uh, school you obviously did your bcom honors uh, and coming from a family of uh, chart accountants namely from the famous bm kothari and company chart accountants of jodhpur uh, was it really expected that you would also follow the footsteps of the family members and go into ca was it expected <laughs> yeah yeah looking to the number of chartered accountants in the family already preceding me uh, jocularly people said about in our family that instead of doing ca you ea you should do ca only because there are so many cas in your family <laughs> of course the ca happens only after graduation and it was just like uh, fish taking to water that i uh, i had an interest in commerce and accounts of course i this was my subject even in the 11th and 12th standard 10 plus 2 as it used to be then also so doing ca was uh, nothing very <laughs> out of way out of box thinking or something like that and ca institute permitted two courses to be done along with your ca courses and uh, therefore i chose company secretaries course and uh, llb so these two courses i could do simultaneously with my ca articles uh, training for 3 years and uh, uh, but as you rightly said that ca is a very tough course even those days and now also always it has been like that only so i remember distinctly for those 6 months when i appeared in the final exams of ca and cs and uh, llb law of course uh, uh, hardly two or three times i went out of my house to the outside road street or any part of the town <laughs> and 16 to 17 hours was the daily study hours and uh, but i actually never got mentally tired out of that that was the kind of uh, love for the courses which i was doing and happy to do that also hard work of course pays and those were the good days so your I, articles were in your family firm is it not yeah i did my family okay now apart from uh, ca company secretary ship did you feel that uh, cs would add some value to you individually or to your ca firm uh yeah it would add value one thing plus there was one uh, possibility which i was having in my mind that if i go to corporate field for serving some corporate uh, company or sector then uh, these to amalgam or combination of uh, cs and lb would uh, definitely give me an edge and uh, would place me in a little more secure and higher position so it could be a better idea that's what i did. okay and uh, doing ca and cs simultaneously so apart from these two law must have been a walk over <laughs> almost <Compared to> these <laughs> two <laughs> you you have caught me at the wrong foot yes <laughs> you know law those those days you know law was uh, not the first choice that is now these days uh, these young boys and girls do in five years courses it was uh, rather uh, last choice if you don't get anywhere else admission then perhaps join law at least in our part of this country it was like that and law i did uh, simultaneously also because some of the papers were common you know some laws you study in ca and cs also and those papers are in llb course also so not a walk over but a very uh, minimal extra effort would uh, get me through uh, this uh, i have a slightly different uh, 
angle and question to that yeah. doing uh, ca cs and law together yeah i'm not asking you about how you attended law classes because all of us know whether we attend law classes or not <laughs> all i'm asking is ca and cs involves a lot of time and effort doing it at the same time how was time management possible no it was possible because uh, my articles uh, training took me to various audit places in various uh, clients places and in the office during the day was also only and luckily well, llb was evening classes so not that i was totally absent from my law classes it was not 100% or even 75% but yes i used to attend some classes and uh, combination of both and cs also as you know is a distance education course from institute you get your study material you study and then appear in the examinations so that did not require any kind of active engagement in the classrooms so it could uh, combine well and uh, merely because i joined my home firm of chartered accountant my brother's uh, firm it did not mean any kind of indiscipline i had to do same amount of work which other articles were doing and regularly attending the offices actually indiscipline has never been uh, in our blood <laughs> it has never somehow dawned upon me <laughs> okay so uh, ca cs and the law and yes. you started practice in your family firm yes. as a proper chartered accountant and uh, keeping that in mind a couple of years later you branched out into law practice with reference to taxation law what what was the event or the incident that sort of uh, ensured that you branched out slightly interesting also and i'll share that with you and for the benefit of the audience also there will be some young people also uh, actually my guru of uh, law field a senior advocate mr marudran medul who is no more now uh, he was very leading lawyer of service jurisprudence or service law in rajasthan high court he used to go to supreme court and other high courts also he used to come to our place for his income tax uh, matters income tax returns and proceedings so i had some occasions to interact with him along with my brother mr bn kochari sir and that perhaps gave him some idea of uh, some kind of spark perhaps in me of communicating well or doing things well or maybe more little more discipline or maybe little more accounting brain also so he uh, suggested to my brother after some months that you have lot many chartered accountants in your family why don't you give me i want to add tax side to my office though he is a civil side lawyer he was a civil side lawyer and very eminent uh, service side lawyer also then um, the thinking process started and it took me about 6 months and uh, uh, there is another interesting aspect i would tell you in a lighter way and also uh, uh, my marriage took place with meena in uh, january 1984 and i shifted from ca profession to law profession in june 84 Uh, so the idea had started little earlier but you see the matrimonial market for a black coat lawyer at that time was not much <laughs> for a chartered accountant perhaps it was better so after got engaged got married then uh, in that process with the of course consent of my wife also i shifted to law profession in june 1984 september i was enrolled i started going to mr marudan gul's place in june but again the the culture there i found of hard work late up to night and there used to be a park near his office nehru park which is very famous here we take to used to take 11 pm stroll around that park with my guru we two three juniors or sometimes one only that was the best time of learning i would say he would give out the tips and uh, points and case laws and study points and he always said can i be a little longer on this aspect because um, he said there is a difference between being a successful lawyer and an eminent lawyer. and being a chartered accountant you can definitely be a successful chartered accountant you could have be you could be definitely a successful lawyer also but being eminent lawyer uh, is desirable and that can be acquired only if you read besides law many other things like literature poetry philosophy history and etc this is what the vision of that great man was i salute you Uh, just in a lighter vein again yeah uh, the 
history has not changed as far as the matrimonial market for black coated lawyers uh, uh, yeah okay i don't know but these days yeah, unless, no, unless the other person is also a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, so you went into full time practice and uh, obviously ca and cs according to you were assets to a tax lawyer very much okay now look at it from the other angle a tax lawyer without the benefit of chartered accountancy do you think that there is an inherent disadvantage uh uh i would not say disadvantage but the gap is there a chartered accountant uh, tax lawyer and a civil lawyer practicing on tax side uh will have a difference because uh, tax laws generally would involve concepts of accounting and balance sheets and assets and liabilities and uh, business corporation economics everything so if you are a chartered accountant you have already studied these subjects in great depth and the level of examinations which the institute of chartered accountants conducts you can't just have an escape route there so uh, Uh, maybe a good civil lawyer can also do tax law there are many good tax lawyers who are not chartered accountants but are doing very well but a chartered accountant turned into a lawyer would i think pick up tax practice faster and perhaps uh, uh, more uh, i mean authoritatively i would say if he is otherwise also a, a package of good uh, uh, lawyer as it requires as you all know with this legal profession Uh, mere the legal knowledge of academics or the books is not uh, enough you have to be very good uh, package of a person <laughs> to be a good lawyer so it gives you an edge definitely there's no doubt okay in your own words it was a it was lucky that you got married in january 1984 before you became a lawyer effectively yeah, yeah. okay now uh, what i heard was that there are so many professionals in your house yours being a joint family there's so many professionals in your house the standing joke that i heard was there are enough professionals for not one but two cricket teams in your house <laughs> baby yes if you take advocates and chartered accountants both into account now we can definitely play a cricket match <laughs> okay that is number one the second thing and i heard this from a reliable source I heard that after you after you got married, your wife was astounded at the number of degrees that you had, and therefore there was a competition between you and your wife for. Oh my God! <laughs> I mean, is that do, right? Do you do you have a CBI agency attached with you, Shriram? <laughs> How much information you have gathered? <laughs> no, we we just uh, we just are lawyers. We have our own sources. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> But you have done a good, uh, I think, research also and good investigation also. uh yeah briefly i'll tell you about my wife also uh, we got married when she was only in the final year of her bcom graduation and after marriage her interest in studies continued and of course i don't know whether she was inspired by my number of degrees or me at all but she was definitely feeling that uh, and she is even now very active so she said that i have different interests so did she she did course in uh, pg journalism even the law after her marriage after her first son vine was born and then uh, a, a bed of uh, especially enabled children course and then some mad in prakrit language to read jainism also uh, jainian literature so she did at least three or four degrees after her marriage and this last degree i think uh, bed jainism she did only four years ago and uh, journalism she did from bhartiya vidya bhavan course conducted here in jodhpur degree course again one year degree course and she learned then computers and this and that now she is a trained mediator also she has never practiced in courts actually but she is a trained mediator and renders her services as a trained mediator in all the three i courts where i have worked oh wonderful <laughs> so can we say based on your speeches here and there uh, i understand that your practice your tax practice in the high court uh, of rajasthan picked up around the year 1990 am i right around 90 99 so uh in effect what you're trying to say is your tax practice which is a niche field to practice picked up in the period of less than 10 years 
and you had a lot of uh, briefs and a lot of uh, work. Is that right? Definitely, <laughs> I was. Uh, it must be extremely taxing to count and to account for the fees. <laughs> no, being a chartered accountant, there also it helped me because you see, you says, uh, uh, and uh, you see, just you feed your receipts and expenses in a computer. By that time, I was the first lawyer to install a computer in my office in Jodhpur. And being a chartered accountant, I knew how the balance sheet is made. So you just make your weekly entries of receipts and expenditure. At the year end, you have your balance sheet. So that software was that available at that time also. And we had an office of charter accountants besides my practicing as a lawyer. So there was no difficulty in filing returns of income tax. And um, the one policy which uh, we had in family, as I said, uh, that uh, we didn't uh, believe in uh, cash visas at all. So all came by checks and all went by check. So whatever is balance is your wealth, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Okay. And since you've been heading the tax bench here for quite some time and you've yeah. been so specialized into tax laws, I'm mm -hmm. sure all the young tax lawyers, people of the tax bar from here and from Rajasthan and whoever is watching, I hope they take a cue out of your words mm -hmm. to see that within the first six, seven years of practice, you had a computer to account for your incomes and receipts. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I tell you, there is one uh, very strong fact I should uh, talk about it. I became an editor of a journal, Sales Tax Literature, STL, which was a countrywide journal published from Jodhpur again. There were two leading publishers in Jodhpur, CTR, Current Tax Reporter, and Sales Tax Literature. We, our office was associated with both the firms. So I wrote my first income tax digest, yearly digest in 1979 I, when I just finished my graduation. So that was my first brush with income tax academics. And in 1986, when I actively started as a lawyer, I became uh, editor of the sales tax literature. And those six years, I worked so hard along with my uh, juniorship in my senior's office, plus my own little practice, which I started picking up as editor. That gave me a possibility to read so many articles, judgments of tribunals, high courts and Supreme Court on sales tax. So those were my foundational years, which gave me definitely a good uh, insight into the law and an edge also. So that helped me in my law practice also. And uh, success begets success. So when you have some kind of good knowledge of a particular subject because of these kind of academic background which you have and the editing work, which helped me a lot. Uh, I within first two three years I uh, I was the second ranking lawyer after the first lawyer Mr. Rajendra Mehta who unfortunately expired a uh, few years back and he was also CA turned into lawyer so I was number two so those who could not afford his fees would come to me so things like that happened and within six seven years I was uh, in the front ranking of things. Okay, so <clears throat> going beyond all this, sir, in spite of your extensive and rather busy practice. Sir, you still chose to do your master's in law. Yeah. You finished your master's in around 1999, 2000? 99, 99. 99. Yes. There is an old joke that in a family which is full of professionals, there can only be one master and that is the wife. How did she react to this? <laughs> no, she helped me to become master at least in this field. <laughs> There's hey, another, there is another old you, joke. You, there is another old joke. joke. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Okay, you are saying that joke? Or no, there is another old joke saying that I am the master of my house and I have my wife's permission to say so. Same. That's uh, the word uh, boss. <laughs> right, right, sir. So, right. But the PSD and LLM happened uh, more because Shriram, I was a guest faculty in the law faculty of Jodhpur University uh, during those years. And uh, 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 while teaching the younger uh, law undergraduates, I thought of, uh, since I was going to college already, I thought of joining LLM also and in the same process, my professor was very helpful and he said, "You, why don't you register for PSD also? So though he was not a tech side uh, teacher or professor, but a very good uh, constitutional expert, Mr. M.K. Bandari, Professor M.K. Bandari. So the, then he enrolled me as a research scholar also under him. And then we did good genuine research work on uh, tax. My subject in detail, little detail was taxation policies and uh, uh, economic policies, interaction between the freedom of trade and taxation policies. 
so we developed a model of uh, tax laws how simple simpler tax laws can give a boost to the economy and uh, can be uh, can secure better compliances from the taxpayers and can bring more revenue so various suggestions in that phd research work were given by now a very very successful and uh, highly paid lawyer after around 20 years doing his masters should send some kind of a message to the young lawyers because there are a lot of lawyers even today who want advice as to whether to pursue a masters in law or not so what would your advice be forget whether it is on tax or otherwise generally what would your advice be to a young lawyer who comes and asks whether he should do a masters in law and the advice is very simple always remain a student don't worry about the degree always remain a student even as a lawyer you pursue any academic interest besides your daily lawyer practice routine also you will learn something different and uh, knowledge never goes waste so therefore even if you are doing a law llm or phd besides your core practice time is a uh, issue of management i would say i have always felt like this that time you can extract for any of your interest or pursuits which you want to pursue and uh, there is a 24 hours can be divided in uh, uh, any sectors you want but if you really want to pursue something you have time for that and uh, this is how if at all people can take some uh, from my life own life uh, uh, progress or development i think i have never felt short of time and i found time for everything including my family including my sports interest into my little bit of music interest though the time on the other side got reduced gradually uh, as i became more busy lawyer and then um, uh, besides being a teacher i did for 6 years in the law university in that process i completed my uh, llm but uh, then uh, phd i did uh, when i left university as a teacher and then i joined so that was the extra time which i put in besides my practice yeah your doctorate was in tax laws yes so uh, you completed your uh, dissertation and you were awarded a doctorate in the year 2004 four oh, yes was there any significance in the timing you become a doctorate in tax laws in 2004 and suddenly the entire high court realizes that you are a very learned person in tax laws and you are called to the bench in 2005 it seems too coincidental no 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 was there was there any any significance in the timing <laughs> no no actually i would tell you a brief uh, i'll disclose a fact which is perhaps not known to many of you uh, justice ar lakshmanan uh, from madras only you all know him very well was chief justice of rajasthan high court uh, in 2003 and 4 so uh, i was only 42 years in 2002 and 3 he was the first chief justice to invite me Uh, he was not really knowing my age at that time but uh, he heard many tax cases which i argued so his lordship was kind enough to call me and say this is mr kothari are you ready to become a judge i want to make you a judge uh, i said sir uh, i i can't immediately respond because it's a uh, attractive proposal also but uh, as you know i am i'm only 42 and i have some i want to secure financial stability for my family so that if i become a judge uh, there's no sudden dip in the income and people feel bad about it but uh, then he ensured that uh, okay 42 then um, at 45 if the offer comes don't say no so this is how mental preparation was given by justice lakshmanan and perhaps he passed on a baton to the next chief justice that uh, you watch him for some time and if you find him good uh, call him and this is how it uh, happened and in 45 plus i gave my consent 45 i gave consent it took 9 months to become a judge and uh, shiram frankly uh, loss of money or income has never been a concern to me at all because uh, judge ship i have uh, i know what it is and uh, i have taken it as a uh, platform to serve the humanity and society i have never had a single day of regret that uh, the comparison between my income as a lawyer or income as salary income as a judge never bothered me the satisfaction which people derive from the quicker disposal of their cases which i am perhaps uh, ill famous or famous for that also 
So that uh, perhaps gave me the satisfaction. And I think text, text bar people, if they are listening to this, they would know that uh, even text matters, uh, they can explain to me in first 10 minutes of their argument, what is the real controversy. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, actually, you preempted a question about the monetary aspect. Because okay. my follow-up <laughs> my follow-up was going to be in spite uh, of being such a busy practitioner. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure it would have been a reasonably lucrative practice yes. in the nineties yeah. or the yeah. early two thousands. Yes. How did you give your consent? Anyway, you have answered that. Mm. Now we come to a very unusual thing in respect mm. of uh, your uh, papers and your presentations all over the world on transfer pricing and various other angles of taxation, hmm. how much of the credit would go to the chartered accountant in you? Or in other words, would all these papers, would it have been possible to present all these papers and to uh, submit them without the benefit of a chartered accountancy degree? Um, no, I, to that I think I would say my deep desire to remain a student and a person who always wants to learn new things help me nothing special about being a chartered accountant or company secretary did that because uh, being a tax side judge as i know now uh, but i've uh, done almost all jurisdictions but it introduced me to some of the judges and uh, itat members who were involved in these organizations who conduct these international conferences one Mr. Pramod Kumar, my friend in ITAT, he's also the same kind of uh, academician in uh, institution. And he introduced and made me a member of IATJ, International Association of Tax Judges. So he took me to the first conference about six years back. And there uh, I delivered that first paper of transfer pricing, made my own slides and made a lot of research of articles and this and that. So that constant research work I did, of course, me and with the help of my uh, law clerks, as, I was a judge already at that point of time, and we have law clerks and interns. So that really, the desire to learn more and uh, expose yourself to the outside world and go there and learn. And I found to my pleasant surprise that even international judges uh, respect Indian judgments on tax side and constitution side very much, even from income tax appellate tribunal. They feel very happy about uh, referring to those cases which income tax travel in India or high courts or Supreme Court decide. And then they sometimes follow it or sometimes distinguish it's a different matter. But then they, they know that uh, India judges, Indian judges, despite being overburdened and over busy, can deliver uh, <laughs> goods on the tax side. So I feel happy by going to such conferences. So you were uh, called to the uh, bench. You were elevated in 2005 and you were uh, at Jodhpur for quite some time. Um, just, just a question out of curiosity. Did you not want to go to some outside court? Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that it was within your control. Yeah. Wouldn't you have wanted to go to some outside court, meet some new people, different cultures, experience new customs, which would have ultimately enriched your experience and probably added... Yeah ability to adjudicate yeah the that there you i find uh, slightly i think i i should have opted for transfer out of rajasthan in the beginning but uh, that somehow the attachment and love for your own place perhaps kept me here but yes one thing i did i the date of oath i requested the chief justice at that point of time to shift me out of jodhpur to jaipur bench so my right. first working day was in jaipur which was where I did not appear as a lawyer very frequently at all. So I sat uh, in Jaipur for about two and a little more, two and a half years or so. Then I uh, was shifted to Jodhpur. By that time, you kind of develop a disconnect or distance with the bar friends and then you can work independently also. But then when the opportunity again came, uh, I gave my option for Bombay and Bangalore. But then I was given Bangalore by Justice, Chief Justice Honorable T.S. Thakur sir. And then, of course, this metros thing. Okay. The but I, I, I should say, transfer is good for a judge. If he wants to learn more, he should expose himself to the different high courts. Of the country. I, I would think so. The transfer to uh, the high court at Karnataka, high court of Karnataka, um, 
it it happened in 2015 16 16 16 april 16. april 18 16. okay so uh, when you were uh, when you had completed around 50 years of uh, being born and brought up in jodhpur yes yes because yes. of that because of the sheer length of having lived in rajasthan and in jodhpur all your life how difficult was it to shift the lock stock and barrel to another it, it it was it was a difficult decision and initially i uh, felt that uh, uh, whether uh, perhaps i can return back to legal profession <laughs> but no the the love for the ship also kept me there but then i took it in a stride I, of course i would have preferred bombay but then uh, since uh, the sis thakur was kind enough to tell me that i on my immediate elevation from kashmir was transferred to bangalore and i have served karnataka for 10 years i am sending you to a very good place you will enjoy that helped me and uh, i think within a month or so i overcame that uh, initial uh, uprooting as you would recall uh, in bangalore also and bangalore is a lovely place i have many good friends there in both bar and bench and the farewell which they gave to me on transfer to madras is a memorable event uh, in my life Wonderful. And the food was also good at Bangalore. Of course. <laughs> More than that, food for thoughts, food for love, affection, <laughs> friendship, everything. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the transfer happened uh, and you came to us. Yes, Madras. Okay. So, uh, on a very base note, how have you liked the climate here and the food? Ah, food is uh, equally good as it is in Bangalore, Karnataka. Okay. Uh, maybe sometimes it is better, some dishes are better. And I love South Indian food right from the beginning. As a, even a Rajasthani, I have loved that food. And most of my LTCs as judge were in South. So Madras I have touched many times before I came there as a judge. Except High Court, I visited almost all places earlier also. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and yes, profession wise, as a judge wise, I, I am very happy to be J1 there. and. And heading the legal service authority, I had opportunity to acting chief justice also for two months or so before justice side came. So it was all good. So far, so good. Very good. Okay. So far away from your uh, native uh, city or place, uh, up far away from your relatives, etc. Apart from your duties as a judge, you must uh, be engaging in some activity to occupy your mind, body, and soul to keep away boredom. And in this context, uh, we hear that you are not only a music lover, but also a musician. Oh no! Is that I right? Would, I would not say. No, at, at what level we will come to? We will come to the level yeah, of your uh, capacity I, later. But yeah. is it true that you are also a musician? Yeah, I love uh, uh, singing also a little bit. Okay. And uh, uh, these days, when I find time, besides reading books, etc. I sing on YouTube tracks <laughs> sometimes. Oh, I see. Hmm. So I have a music system in my uh, home at Chennai. Okay. And on YouTube tracks and one music app is there Smule. S M U L E Smule. Hmm. Oh, I don't know how you pronounce it. That's all a very good music app. I sing along those tracks. And I play a little bit of uh, flute and mouth organ also. So I don't know. I should uh, give no. a play. Uh, You're still in touch? Do you still play? I can't claim that in touch or very good practice, but yes, I think I can play. <laughs> I have that kind of inner confidence. Uh, I mean, this is uh, something that is not prearranged. I must tell the viewers: Is it possible for you to play uh, the, probably the mouth organ? Because it's uh, yeah, no, no, I have my flute here because my mouth organ I have left in my Chennai home. As you know, I am in Jodhpur these days. Okay. Uh, if you permit, and if the audience, I don't know whether because they can't come on face. Uh, I do. No, one Hello. one Hindi film song I would like to play on your flute which is lying with me now. From which so, movie is that? From the film Hero? No, no, from film Shore. Ik Pyar Ka Nagma. You know Hindi a little bit, I can. Yes. Ik Pyar Ka Nagma Hai, Maujon Ki Ravani Hai. Okay, Hindi done. I love the song. Teri Meri Kahan. I love the song. I, 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 I don't know. Please, please forgive me for my mistakes if any. <laughs> Thank you. 
you. <laughs> I uh, keep it on my table generally. That is that is actually very good. <laughs> uh, no, and it's not because I have to appear before you and that I'm saying it. It was really no, good. Not <laughs> not it was really very good. Actually, yeah. with this, I've appeared before you. <laughs> but t- tell me something. Do, uh, do you also come from a musical family? Um, I would say yes in a way because my brother B.M. Kuthari sir uh, also used to play very good flute. Uh, have almost all the instruments at home, I would say. Harmonium, guitar, violin, uh, drums, uh, and you name what, whatever. It is almost all, everything is there. And without any formal training also, my brother uh, I used to uh, play a flute very, very beautifully. And he was a very good singer also. He could take the voice up to a very high note, which possibly I can't take. But uh, then uh, from him, we do the inspiration and at least uh, I would say uh, at least four or five family members of uh, his sons also included. He has three sons and they also play flute, can play harmonium and God's grace is that uh, you sing any song and on harmonium possibly I can accompany you immediately and find the tune. <laughs> so that's a kind of God gift. I would not claim any credit for that but then uh, I okay. can since since you've entertained us by playing on the flute, uh, one of the most beautiful songs, it was by Ekapiyat uh, Kanagam. Lakshmi Kan Paralal. Lakshmi Kan Paralal. It was sung by Mukesh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mukesh Tata. Right. Okay. You were able to identify the music composer and you were able to identify the singer. Now, there's a small test for you. We want to see whether you can identify this singer. Wilson, can we have the song, please? Oh my God. <laughs> this is real exam. Peri Taman Peri Taman Okay. Oh my God! You you have I think you have friends in all corners of the country. We are we are basically investigation officers. We just, <laughs> we just put on black uh, black robes and come to court. <laughs> and I should introduce now the other singer. He is Mr. Manu Medul, a very good advocate in Delhi, practicing Supreme Court. And he is the son of my guru, Mr. Marudan Medul. Oh, I see. And recently only we got to know each other in this form. That we both sing along on this Simul app. No, music yeah. app. And then we shared. And this was one song which I sang one part and sent it to him. That you please complete it and send it back to me. Resend it back to me. Yeah. And he did that. And I don't know where from you got it. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um, okay. Another Mukesh song. Yeah. But don't ask me from where I got it. I'm not going to I tell the stores. <laughs> but I have, to be aware. I have to be aware of you now. <laughs> <laughs> Aware or beware? <laughs> Be aware, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, having said that, uh, music is such a wonderful expression of your inner self. Huh? And uh, therefore, what role does music uh, play in your life? For example, there, there are a lot of people who listen to music just to de-stress. There are a lot of people who listen to music to enjoy themselves. It gives them entertainment. For you, since you are in a uh, slightly tough job, to say, in, in the midst of a serious and complicated hearing stretching over days, do you feel that music acts as a relaxant for you? Definitely, and very great, very, very big measure, it helps in relaxing. And uh, on the lighter vein, it reduces the fights with wife also. If you sing a beautiful song for her, <laughs> the tension would go away. <laughs> And after a hard days of work, even at 10 in the night, if I sing along two songs on YouTube track, that helps me in having a very good sleep without any tension in the night. Yeah. So that's a very good uh, uh, stress buster, definitely. Okay. And if you can play instruments like mouth organ or something like this, or sing along also, these days tracks are available, so you can definitely enjoy. Incidentally, this mouth organ, according to me, was made famous by this uh, Mere Sapunonki in, uh, in uh, yeah. Aradhana. 
would you be able to do you play that bit that song i have not tried so bad but uh, uh, ye dosti hum nahi todenge ye yes, wala yes. that's another famous song from shole uh, and ik pyar ka nagmon that instrument also sounds very good uh, that i have tried uh, um, dil man dole tera nagin dhun nagin dhun also so you're not able to play the mouth organ because it's there in madras i don't have that instrument here otherwise i would have press <laughs> it's it's in chennai yeah it's in chennai okay uh, the next webinar that, the next webinar that we have is when you are here so that <laughs> you can play that <laughs> okay. Okay. okay so who is your uh, favorite uh, music composer in hindi and uh, maybe the singer uh, did, um, i would love any song of 60s and 70s latest up to 80s beyond that oh, I... so you are talking about sd barman op nayar naushad definitely lakshmi gan parela shankar jay kishan mostly okay. song from mukesh okay. and kishor mohammad rafi so it's wonderful they are all leading uh, legends of the bollywood cinema okay right thank you so one part is music another part that uh, you are very proficient at uh, is uh, sports in fact uh, i did not come but when uh, there was this match at uh, chidambaram stadium between the advocate generals 11 and the chief justices 11 yeah yeah, yeah. you were there i saw a photograph of you i got uh, correct did yeah. you play i played i got best fielder's trophy also <laughs> i oh, took one catch okay uh, i don't perhaps a lawyer was rahul or something but uh, god was in my <laughs> side so i ran about 15 20 steps and could catch the ball which others thought i could never take and that uh, catch got me that uh, uh, trophy also and no. then and, uh, it was very good yes i play cricket i play god was on your side but was he part of the playing 11 or was he the non playing captain <laughs> you see that you have seen one movie chamatkar yeah. <laughs> a person who got disappears but helps him <laughs> okay so did you bat in that match in that match yeah. did you bat at all and i if i remember correctly perhaps uh, five or 10 runs 10 runs i contributed uh, in one over which uh, made a sort of uh, contribution now tell me which advocate got you out uh, i don't want to remember his name but i remember his face also so <laughs> <laughs> the very fact that you are saying that you don't want to remember his name that was my follow up question did this advocate who get you uh, who got you out did he appear before you in the next 2 3 days <laughs> otherwise you would have told me sir <laughs> okay wonderful yeah. now uh, the reason for asking about sports is also a specific uh, one sports uh, leads to a lot of uh, physical uh, activity yeah yeah and uh, the intense physical activity has it helped you in your profession let's say with reference to team work or punctuality or discipline definitely a sportsman is spirit itself as they say when you lose you you don't lose your heart if you lose a match or a game you don't lose your heart and you appreciate uh, the winner who is your opponent and that team spirit also helps a lot and in profession also because uh, we did many briefs as a team of lawyers also there also this spirit works in the background you know you don't feel a second man or a first man or a just a simple non playing member of the team etc so some big briefs which i did with the seniors uh, the sportsman spirit also plays a role and generally a a man who is a sports person uh, would not lose the heart and head very easily this is the i think backbone of it uh i also understand that you played table tennis and badminton at the university level yes yes i represent uh, do you continue playing that after you become a judge oh yes actually I, i yes in bangalore we had a regular uh, table tennis uh, sessions also in rajasthan also we had a table tennis table in our tea room in rajasthan so What? even for 15 minutes uh, two three four judges who knew a little bit of table tennis would go on the table play and then have a cup of tea and then go back to the court so this is how it uh, used to happen and now in chennai also i have at my request the judicial academy is getting the badminton court ready up done up so i think we can restore that very soon 
<laughs> okay, the badminton court will be open only to judges or to lawyers as well. Uh, that will depend. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I have played badminton in Chennai also, and sometimes with uh, brother Sarvananje uh, in the Gandhinagar club also. But uh, okay. I could not continue for long. For a few days, we went. There. Okay, brother Kudus and brother Sarvananje. Okay. Very now, given that the lifestyle of judges and lawyers are primarily very sedentary. And keeping in mind the kind of sports that you have played, what would your advice be to juniors about the importance of sports, especially in a, in a profession like ours, which involves a lot of sitting around? Uh, every person, I think, should have some extracurricular interest or hobby or pastime to do, either it is music or sports or uh, reading, general reading also. But I think sports helps you in doing physical activity also, which is very necessary for uh, keeping your body and soul together, at least in fit condition. And judges with ill health cannot be even good judges. So they have to be good in body and mental health both. And I think uh, sports is a good uh, way out for them. So all, all persons, whatever sports you play, hockey, cricket, table tennis, badminton, football, whatever. Like my son plays football very much more. He's crazy of football. <laughs> So any game you want to play, physical activity is a must for good uh, health and therefore I think uh, everybody should have a passion and love for sports. Time is the key factor and time management is an art which everybody can do. Not I think time management is something that people will have to learn from you, especially yeah. the lawyers. Okay, now coming to the probably the last uh, facet, uh, six sides, uh, when I put it out on one group. Oh, I must. I must congratulate you for the design of invite which you made six sites <laughs> and then you gave me I missed almost all uh, little achievements or whatever I've done in my life in those six fields a uh, CA, CS, law and then uh, you talked of Jainism, sports and music I think yeah wonderful congratulations for that and I think who is behind that design I don't know but uh, um, it was actually Wilson he was assisted by my daughter Oh, <laughs> yeah. my the idea of for the, the idea for the star came from my wife. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. because you know when you have law, a lawyer for a wife, uh, we don't have any original ideas. All the original ideas come from there. <laughs> At least you should give credit for that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so now coming to the when I in fact posted this on some group, there was one uh, uh, senior advocate who asked whether, due to the six facets, uh, this person is a diamond. <laughs> I said, watch the program and then form your own conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, now coming to this uh, last uh, serious uh, uh, field that you're into. Uh, would you say that you have always been a very religious person? Mm, yes, I would say. Uh, because uh, uh, being a Jain, uh, I don't think it should be compared with the caste. Caste is something different. Religion is something different. And Jainism, we have been following for generations. And thanks to my parents and elders in the family who gave us all these uh, good sanskaras. And, uh, basic tenets of Jainism, you all know perhaps, but uh, the five elements which we believe in Jainism and we practice or at least try to practice uh, meticulously throughout the life uh, which we lead are uh, as you first of uh, non-violence, ahinsa which we say in Hindi, non-accumulation, aparigraha, then uh, truth, satya, celibacy, brahmacharya, uh, Acharya means non-theft, you will not uh, steal away anything. So these are five elements of Jainism which Lord Mahavira propounded. And you will find this in uh, literature called Agamas. Uh, we have a Tamil Nadu Thiruvallur which generally people refer and uh, read also. Many good poetic uh, quotations are there. And I don't have authentic uh, information but even some of the, them are drawn from the religious tenets of Jainism. And as you know, uh, Jainism is very old, uh, wide, pervasive kind of religion, which was in the at least half of the world planet uh, prevalent thousands of years ago. So these are the basic tenets which keeps on guiding you 
throughout your life. And if you want to remain Jain at heart and at head, you don't fall off the track into the many things, mire of the worldly things which you one is attracted to or one can fall into that. So that is the that is how I feel a religion of any kind. Any, I, I don't say one religion is superior to other, but religion helps you in leading a good life. And I'm lucky that I was born in a family with these tenets of Jainism, which were followed from earlier generations also. And they uh, came down to us and have gone down further to our next generation also. So these are the things which helps you in okay. keeping. This. Forget being a religious person. But it is often said that uh, Jains, most Jains, implement the teachings of their guru in everyday life. Would you say that you belong to that category or are you slightly different? Uh, no, because you see, I can't say that I have been going to guru or preachers or Jain monks every day. There we go only uh, in the Chaturmas, which four months period is there now, which will now commence in July. Uh, then, of course, weekly times we go, so weekends. But yes, there are books, there are monks, there are preachings. And now even YouTube can help you in getting those some of the uh, things, literature also. So if you have interest in those things, you can definitely, again, I would say time management, you can find time for even these things and uh, keep yourself on the track again. I have been very fascinated by one aspect of Jainism. On one day in a year, they seek forgiveness from everybody else yes. and normally in Jainism the tendency to forgive is very high okay now uh, this might sound to be a slightly uh, uh, humorous question but it is not I'm, I'm serious about this uh, I'm sure you would have decided quite a few criminal appeals but keeping this tendency to forgive etc which is very high in Jains uh, has this ever affected you, this tendency, has it ever affected you while dealing with criminal matters? In, in other words, what I'm trying to ask is, has there been a conflict between the religious person in you and the judicial person in you? <laughs> very, very uh, deep question you asked, uh, Sri Ram. Uh, but you know, the Shama or forgiveness which uh, Jains follow is not, uh, has perhaps nothing to do with the profession which uh, as a judge I do. It is for the hurt given by others to you as a person that you forgive. And you seek forgiveness from others also if you feel that you have hurt that person. This forgiveness is uh, one to one. Jeev, he may be man, woman, child, anything, even a tree. So this forgiveness is not uh, that uh, if I'm hearing a criminal appeal and the evidence is starkly there and uh, very clear that a uh, man has committed murder, uh, I would not grant punishment, uh, give the punishment. That I think uh, this uh, concept of forgiveness uh, does not stop you from doing that, discharging that duty. But yes, there is one angle which I, perhaps I have never done that, avoiding death sentence or choosing between death sentence or a life imprisonment, perhaps, I don't know, I've never experienced this, uh, Jainism may uh, perhaps uh, give a direction uh, as a judge also. Because to take away anybody's life is, uh, is the first uh, thing which you should not do. Ahinsa is the first thing. But uh, other awarding of punishments, as far as that is concerned, I think uh, this concept or precept of Jainism will not come into play. And uh, uh, I, 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 I want to quote one uh, quotation from Lord Mahavira, which is about, very relevant about this Shama on that particular day, which we call Paryushan, uh, end of the four, between the four months period, the Lord Mahavira said, Khamemi Savva Jeeve Su Savve Jeeva Khamantu Me Mitti Me Sarva Bhuve Su Vair Majjhana Kenai Translated it means that I seek forgiveness from all the living beings around me. Please forgive me. I have friendship with all. I have enmity with none. These are the two lines which uh, we all follow in principle. 
and therefore that uh, one more thing one word would i would tell you about jainism because you have talked about it is pratikama whatever you do during the day or a particular period pratikama means apologizing to those during that period to whom you have hurt physically or mentally so it's very fine or refined kind of uh, thought process uh, which uh, should work in your mind for seeking forgiveness from others so that is how i perceive uh, jainism and principles i may not be going to mosques every day i may not be reading much of or many of the literatures but if you follow these principles it helps yes okay okay now uh, that is as far as jainism is concerned yes. now uh, uh, both your sons are lawyers and uh, are they around all, all the family members my wife <laughs> all the family members are my lawyers in law <laughs> they are all enrolled but uh, ladies are not in active practice sons are okay also. and uh, the decision to do law well, was it by the family or uh, was it an individual decision as far as i am concerned no 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 your your son sons sons so oh, that i think uh, left to them only and they perhaps thought that they can follow their father's footsteps and uh, ca they did not opt i don't know why but uh, law they opted because uh, it was just uh, they liked it perhaps by choice nothing by force uh, i have never forced anything on my we experience and never forced anything <laughs> okay uh, are your sons there are they around mehul is oh. nearby i can call him vinay vinay no 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 you don't have to call them they are in the same okay okay so uh, when you're presenting international papers and all that uh, different countries uh, yes as a uh, interaction with different judges interaction with different experts in the taxation field uh, interaction with probably representatives of government to see how government policy is regarding mm. taxation yes. as a judge what has it taught you what has it uh, brought to you it uh, has uh, uh, one thing i would like to say about indian tax laws is that they are unnecessarily complex or made complex by the annual amendments as far as the income tax act is concerned we need to have much simpler uh, income tax law in our country that i in my humble opinion will not only give much better compliance but much more revenue also so they are very very complicated uh, kind of provisions and if you go to the income tax act even the index of that the number of subsections provisos or explanations which you find in one section giving some deduction or concession to an industry or a business house uh, are so many that by the time you read the last part of it you forget the must first main subsection so even as a tax lawyer and tax judge for so many years even now i pick up the book latest edition and then uh, go through the bare act at the time when the argument starts and i request the lawyers also tax lawyers would vouch for it that please read the law and if the relevant assessment year is sometime back get that book also because every year law is kept on being amended and they i think they have like palkewala road constitution defaced and defied we have defaced and defied our income tax law in the process of this now there was a talk of direct tax code sometime ago even that has not come but i read the draft of it it was a mix of the income tax act as it existed then with some suggestions so we need to have simpler tax laws uh, also about gst the indirect tax also i would say a few words that uh, gst as a, i wrote uh, this stl which i talked about an article about 30 years back uniform rate of taxation and trade policies so this uniform tax rates was the concept which is at the bottom of the gst and there was always a need to have one uniform tax one tax one nation they talk but they actually made three uh, laws of gst and uh, various rates of that various slabs of that that has again rendered this law also complex one and i it is a of course a separate very detailed topic which i can talk about it at long also but then uh, as a policy i would say we in this country need to make tax laws very very simpler otherwise it is uh, tax consultants heavens uh, tax payers uh, <laughs> this is what uh, help so uh, 
uh, I think uh, uh, on tech side, uh, we need to have much simpler laws. This is my understanding of the whole working uh, as a judge and as a lawyer. Okay. Now, uh, coming to a few questions, and, and then I'm sure, yeah, that, sure. Uh, uh, members who are watching, uh, the okay. lawyers and uh, predominantly the lawyers. This is the first time a judge would face questions. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but in sessions of uh, conferences and uh, webinars or yeah. seminars, we do have. So, so uh, uh, is uh, Mr. A.P. Srinivas there? Oh. Yes, yes. Oh, all the questions have come from the tax bar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope they are not asking for my opinions on issues. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, Srinivas, how are you? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Fine. Can I Fine before before AP Srinivas before AP asks this question, yeah. let me preface that question with a broad question. What has been your experience with the Madras bar? Srinivas, oh. Srinivas will add one word there to say what is your experience with the Madras tax bar? I'm not asking that. Have What's you heard experience have with you, the Madras bar? Have you heard triple A plus price ratings for the business companies? <laughs> It same applies to this bar. Okay, the it was please, whatever you yes. want to ask. Yes. yes, that was the question, Lordship. How Lordship generally feels about the Madras bar? I question oh. about Madras tax bar. You know uh, about the Madras bar now. That, that's a leading question, but the answer is very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I have enjoyed Madras bar's assistance and. Uh, uh, insight into the tax laws very much on both sides, direct taxes and indirect taxes. And uh, I think uh, uh, the only thing I can uh, give it as a message to you seniors is that you give a uh, lot of more work to your second line uh, as young lawyers. Because uh, I have always uh, as a judge uh, felt that the second or third uh, ranking lawyers should also uh, get uh, more opportunity to address the and in the process, they will face uh, volumes of questions, and uh, in that process, they will prepare the cases better. You senior people are uh, wonderful people. You have already, I think, uh, you do wonderful work as a tax bar as a whole. Uh, but the second rank and third ranking lawyers, uh, I am finding that uh, they need your blessings more and more opportunities to work and address the court. So that is. Give some part of your work to them also. That is my uh, message to you, I would say. Yeah. Thank you. And nice seeing you again after a long gap. Uh, this thank, okay. thank you, Lord. We have, uh, we have uh, Dr. Krishnanand, advocate, uh, who I think wants to ask something or say something. Dr. Krishnanand. Welcome. Dr. Krishnanand, could you unmute yourself? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good evening, my lord. Good evening, sir. How are you? Yeah. Fine, thank you, lord. <laughs> uh, one thing I have noticed appearing in your court. Yeah. Too fast for a lawyer. Before <laughs> I can even present what I want to present, before even I want to read a particular paragraph from a particular judgment to cite in my favor, you okay. have read the judgment completely before I can even start reading four lines from a judgment. <laughs> Is it good or bad? <laughs> as far as the lawyer is concerned, I don't think it is good because you want me to read what is against me first and then what is in my favor later. <laughs> and second, good, thing, good. I, 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 I really take this. Uh, even if you are saying as a point of uh, critical assessment uh, of me as a judge, <laughs> no, 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 no. I think uh, it's very good. It's an observation that I made. And second yeah. thing, one thing I have noticed that you are the only judge before whom I have appeared who always says, Never use the words so and so, so and so. Read the paragraph as it is and what is there in that particular paragraph. We normally oh, skip names, we normally skip dates, we normally skip references, but you insist that it has to be read completely. It has to be yeah. read as it is. So yeah. I've learned from you, and I think the complete Madras tax bar has learned from you. <laughs> Thank you for that comment. Uh, but the, the, the trade secret, I will tell you on this. When you read the dates and figures in the paragraph, even if the judge is reading that part or even slightly beyond that, the, the moment you emphasize that date, we go back on that and then start reading with you. 
so that helps a perhaps a uh, more comprehensive reading while giving the same amount of uh, attention to the learned member of bar who is arguing and that is the reason i say please read the dates also and uh, uh, i we had a judge justice navlekar who retired from supreme court he was a very stickler for dates and uh, sequence of facts then he said if you give the facts in a good narrative uh, law if we have any doubt or question we'll ask you but you can presume that we also know little bit of law so <laughs> if you give the dates and facts very clearly uh, i think uh, uh, more than half of your job is already done so that is what that perhaps uh, got down in my mind also some down, down the line and and i think it makes sense also yeah thank you, know, you for that. one interesting facet of uh, my lordship is yeah. that uh, when i read a particular paragraph either from my affidavit or from a case law or from the section your lordship reads it along with me hmm. which i have never very rarely noticed among judges <laughs> <laughs> the judges normally allow you to say what you want to say and then yeah. can, but my lordship has always uh, read the section or the portion i want to read along with me and your lordship always says let us read it together and your yeah. lordship starts you know it's a very rare thing coming from a, a senior judge like you who allow <laughs> us to actually understand i think i think sir that uh, helps uh, both of us uh, in reading the provision in particular light or context of the facts which we are seized of because uh, all application of law depends on the facts as we all know and therefore reading the provision again and again and every time you read you get a shade of idea Uh, different from you so that is that's uh, i'm grateful my lord thank you thank you thank you and the covid period has uh, allowed you to grow your beard like anything <laughs> now it is time to shave off and come back on six <laughs> okay. okay let's see how clean shaven the next person is uh, mr okay. vs jay kumar advocate wilson can you please unmute uh, vs jay kumar okay very learned senior Yeah, Jay Kumar, you'll have to unmute yourself. Unmute. Honorable uh, just, uh, Justice, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, Jay yeah. Kumar. Yeah, uh, Mr. Sriram has mentioned only about six of your facets. Oh. <laughs> What I'm going to mention about you is that you've been very kind to us, and oh. you gave us a fantastic hearing, uh, especially to tax lawyers. When most of the time we don't even carry books because the books with the judges and the books with us are totally. different edition and uh, you enabled us to circulate the book and so very humane and uh, you have a fantastic disposal and hats off to you thank you very much thank you thank, thank you so much you have been wonderful at bar also and thank here also much. i take it as blessings to me thank you yeah, i did few cases before you and i had a full satisfaction of losing i don't mind <laughs> thank, thank you thank you thanks thanks jackman uh, uh, we have a, a a chartered accountant called ganesh Shendage, if I got the name right, from Karnataka. Ganesh Shendage, uh, would you like to ask something? Because you raised your hand. Yes, sir. yes. Yeah. Uh, Hi. Oh. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, yes. Good evening, Ganesh. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, sir. I'm good. Uh, it was really fantastic hearing you uh, from you know different facets of your life. So I am a chartered accountant. Basically, what I want, I wish to know is uh, having a chartered accountancy and CS qualification on hand with bright future ahead. What was the thing which drove you to go in, uh, you know, or you know, uh, litigation practice or eventually to the, uh, you know, judiciary to become a judiciary at the end? Uh, what is the key key thing? If I if I heard you clearly, you wanted to know why did I. Uh, transit from ca profession to law profession yes sir yes sir. oh that i had uh, 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 talked about it but uh, uh, i would say sir that uh, legal profession is uh, much wider and broader in perspective than even ca profession and uh, i in instead of having any regret i think i am very happy and lucky that i was guided at that point of time to switch over from ca profession to legal profession and now with some experience at my hand i even uh, tell my younger uh, ca friends uh, those who have done a law graduation also to uh, try this profession as well because uh, you see commercial litigation and economic uh, litigation is bound to increase 
and even judiciary indian judiciary has to respond to that call at the international level in a very very more befitting manner and therefore we need i think more judges right from civil judge level to uh, high court and supreme court judges with this background so that the international scene of our dispensation of indian judiciary is uh, more quicker and more uh, appropriate and befitting so i think uh, turning yourself from ca to law lawyer uh, is a good uh, diversification i would say and uh, those who can do it should definitely do it try it yeah just uh, just in few uh, one or two uh, you know brief points can you suggest uh, can you give some suggestions uh, for people who want to people like me who wish to get into law practice i am practicing chartered accountant last four years i have been doing practice i have okay. a problem of getting into litigation no uh, there are there are there are senior chartered accountants like you sir also who have shifted after 10 or 20 years of uh, ca profession into law profession just as vk singhal who came to karnataka high court you might be knowing he was earlier practicing as chartered accountant for more than 10 years then he switched over to law practice so his lawyer practice was only about 8 uh, or 9 years or so something like that so his ca practice as in the department was considered as 10 years uh, qualification to become a judge and then he was made a judge in rajasthan high court and then he came to karnataka high court so uh, uh, switching over from uh, ca to legal profession even at a later stage like 10 years 20 years also is a welcome uh, diversification even you can think of it you are always welcome we we need good lawyers uh, in all the high courts and all the places thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you ganesh Uh, this question has come by email and it's an interesting question uh, what is your advice to young judicial officers in the lower judiciary since you have said a lot to the juniors and seniors at the bar now this question is being asked by a very very young district judge and this young district judge is my classmate so you can understand how young he is <laughs> <laughs> youth is a state of mind for you absolutely you are you also very young even i am young <laughs> don't say <laughs> so i think judicial officers uh entry level district judge i think uh in tamil nadu uh, i feel uh, we need constant uh, judicial training in judicial academy at a uh, far more uh, length of time which we are presently dispensing i think presently judicial training is happening only to new entrants the older batches are getting less opportunity to be trained and uh, i would say that the not only the quantum disposal of cases uh, which uh, has to be increased because to meet the uh, load of cases but i with great respects i find that the quality of uh, subordinate judges uh, has to uh, improve uh, a bit more and for that i think uh, the academics of the district judges and even lower civil judges uh, has to improve they have to read more of the later amendments of law and some case laws and for them i think case laws whenever they read they should not read only head notes and catch notes they should read the whole of it even if they read one or two leading judgments on uh, any controversy which they come across uh, as a part of their uh, academic exercise they can have friday academic clubs weekend academic clubs discuss the various issues which are coming before them and if they do little more at the academic exercise the quality of the orders can go up substantially and that is my request and uh, uh, if you can say message also to the younger and not so younger uh, judges in the state of tamil nadu also uh, do some more academic exercises discussions academic clubs and some more reading uh, because besides your routine work which for, with of course you are very busy like all judges are in india but uh, some more academic exercise or inputs are required okay now this has also come on chat i do not know whether is this question by this young lady uh, who is part of the tax bar madri guruswami would you like to ask your question directly madri are you there madri you can you, ask you, 
you can ask your query directly. Nobody is going to take it amiss. <laughs> Uh, very thank you very much, sir, for this. I'm sorry, my video isn't working uh, all right, so I'll have to ask this. Uh, this was a this was a different facet of which we saw your lordship normally. My mm -hmm. question to you, sir, is: um, Is there somebody whom you would like to, whom as a young advocate, whom you thought that we should uh, learn from him or emulate from him, both as a lawyer as well as a judge? That somebody uh, who has uh, impressed upon you uh, at any point uh, of time. <laughs> it is difficult for me, madam, to name any uh, lawyer or uh, just to whom you should learn from because uh, uh, all lawyers are good, those who perform well. But I uh, naming somebody, I think, would unnecessarily create a kind of impression of bias, which I don't have for anybody, for or against. <laughs> I'm talking about your seniors, sir. I mean, not the current person. I'm talking about your seniors as a young member of a bar, uh, uh, whom you would, uh, whom you thought you should emulate uh, as a person or somebody who was really impressed upon you. Uh, I, I think for that, the only suggestion I can immediately give to you is read some good autobiographies of uh, great lawyers. Uh, any any uh, Motilal Nehru, you read Palkiwala's books, We the Nation, We the People. Um, any any good uh, lawyers or judges autobiographies you read, you will know various facets of their life uh, uh, and the, the the practical tips how a lawyer should behave or speak in court, when to speak, when not to speak, when to express humor, when not to express humor, how to read the judges face and psychology, all these things come to you not only by experience, but by reading good material like this. So I think as a young lawyer, you should uh, read more and more about the lives of the various uh, senior lawyers and judges. I think that should, that should help you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for Thank this you. opportunity. Nice talking Sushira, to you. Thank you very much too. Not at all. Not at all. Bye. Uh, next is uh, our two questions that have come on private chat uh, from uh, uh, Advocate Sundar, SR Sundar, other than tax cases, what other field in our High Court is interesting to you? That is question uh, one. Okay, yeah. uh, I have decided some cases of Admiralty Law, Company Law here, arbitration I have done. And in Rajasthan, I had done a lot of rent control matters. So that was uh, my favorite kind of civil jurisdiction. Criminal work, I have not done much in the initial period of my justice, which is now 15 years I have completed. I did criminal appeals also, criminal revisions also. Very rarely bails. Bails, uh, I don't even count them as my disposal of a number of cases if I were to count them. But yes, civil property disputes and arbitration cases have uh, allowed me to not only learn but dispose of many cases. And IPRs and admiralty law were little newer fields to me, which I not, did not practice uh, as a judge or as a lawyer in Rajasthan or Karnataka. But in Madras, I got very good opportunity to um, uh, learn these laws and decide some good cases. One of them became a very leading case of admiralty, where the leave of the company court is not required to be taken to pursue a suit in admiralty jurisdiction in Madras original jurisdiction in High Court. That judgment was followed uh, by Bombay High Court uh, uh, bench also. And that was reported in Lloyd's Law Reports, which is very leading law journal in admiralty jurisdiction. So that is the satisfaction I got in deciding few of these uh, areas of... Uh, okay. Laws. The second question of uh, SR Sundar is, since you have been here for quite some time, have you learned to read and write in Tamil? Ah, he's I would rather, love to. No, no, he's been rather impertinent, I know. <laughs> no, I would love to. I would love to learn. But uh, yes, I should again manage my time for that. <laughs> I've been teaching that. And yes, I had one small book when I came here. I was given uh, how to learn Tamil in 30 days. I could not read in 30 days also. But I picked up uh, like simple mathematics, one, two, three, four, simple words like Vanakkam and uh, Nandri and... Uh, these words, but uh, I could not, uh, I cannot speak a sentence. So, uh, okay. Script thanks. also, I have to learn. Thank you, thanks, thanks. Man. But yeah, thanks the state you. anthem, state anthem, I have tried to memorize, and now you will find me lip syncing with the song whenever it is played <laughs> in the conferences. Okay. Prithvi Chopra, 
has been raising his hand for such a long time that I'm sure his hand is paining. <laughs> Can we have Prithvi Chopra? I know ask, he's a young uh, tech lawyer. Justice Kothari, yeah. To ask Justice Kothari, whatever he has in mind. Prithvi. Thank you. Thank you, Sriram, sir. Uh, good evening, my lord. Good evening, how are you? Good. I'm fine, my lord. Uh, yes. my, my lord, my question is, today, a young lawyer is equipped with a lot of uh, resources, a lot of knowledge, a lot of materials uh, for his case. But then when it comes to uh, presenting the case before a bench, before a judge, they start to panic. They start to panic and they tend to lose focus on that. So this is, this I see a, a major problem which is uh, uh, among the young uh, advocates. Uh, your views, Maron, on how to overcome uh, this problem. Uh, I am uh, pretty sure that you are a young lawyer. Have you ever yes. panicked in my court? Maraj, I have had that experience, Maraj, but then I always, uh, I now I have the, I always like to uh, appear before your lordships and argue the case. That's good. But uh, no, there is no need to panic at all. A, a, of course, in very initial appearances, a lawyer may feel uh, slightly embarrassed or uh, hazy or panicked also because it is his first, second or third appearances and he's not sure what the judge would ask and whether he'll be able to reply or not reply. But then, uh, I think by and large and generally, the judges are sympathetic to the young lawyers. They have passed through that phase. So they know how a young lawyer would uh, pick up and cope up with the questions. So there's absolutely psychologically, there should be no barrier at all. And there's no need to panic at all. If you are uh, ready with your facts and basic statute uh, in your hand and some case law, if you have read that, I think there's nothing to panic. And if you cannot answer the questions of the court also, don't panic again. You just say, I need some more time to study a little more. There is no harm in admitting that you don't know everything what just expects you to know. So you said that you have a lot of uh, young lawyers, have a lot of resources and knowledge. There is a difference between the two. You have a lot of resources. Yes, a lot of knowledge, not necessary because knowledge comes with the time and experience and reading all the three things put together. Uh, but uh, the maturity and the reducing sense of panic uh, comes with the time. Even if you panic initially, gradually I think uh, judges would try to settle you psychologically by showing their sympathy and uh, compassion. That young man or uh, lady, you kindly read this aspect of the better and then come again. Nobody would like to kill the case because a young person is there. I think no judge does that also. So no need of panic. Thank you very much, Malad. And for young you, lawyers, Sriram. sky is the limit in this profession. So yes. you can always grow. Always. Yes. Uh, seeing your entire career, Malad, learning from you, it just motivates to I, do much. I am an ordinary mortal. Yes, whatever little I have achieved is by God's grace. Thank you. Thank you very much, Malad. Thank okay. you, Sri Thanks, Prithvi. Uh, the next person to raise hand is Rahul Jain. I do not know whether he's a lawyer or a chartered accountant. Rahul Jain, please. Hello. Good evening, Lordship. Ah, Hello. Yeah. Fine, yeah, Lordship. How are you, Lordship? You are an advocate. I am a practicing advocate in Madras High Court, yeah, Lordship. Oh, just uh, enroll in 2017. Yeah, Lordship, just my question was also to keep up with uh, Prithvi's question. What will be your advice to the first generation lawyer to be your para paralegal as of now? If just Paralegal means? Paralegal as, of your, as your Lordship is... Uh, as a judge, if we hope, as a first generation lawyer, we hope to see uh, ourselves as a judge. Parallel, huh. then what will be your advice? Oh, oh you mean to you? Of course. <laughs> we we uh, hope if we practice it. No, no. Becoming a judge uh, uh, can be a good thing, no doubt about it. And as you know, entry in the judgeship is at uh, various levels in our country. Civil judge, then district judge, then high court. So, uh, I think... Uh, being a judge is not a bad idea at all. On the contrary, it gives you a very great opportunity to serve the society and uh, express yourself in uh, words, in, through your pen, through your judgments, in a more appropriate manner, in a more peaceful manner also. As a lawyer, the natural tension yes, of society of getting the results of what you are arguing or what you are submitting before the court is much more than as a judge. Because as a judge, you can write more peacefully, 
after hearing, after fully understanding, after fully comprehending the situation. And young, bright lawyers uh, should definitely think of uh, judgeship also because uh, 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 at all levels also, if the judgeship is strong and uh, well-trained and well-educated, of course, there are exams for entry also. But then uh, being a good uh, lawyer uh, is necessary for being a good judge. And therefore, I think uh, as far as the now payments and perquisites to judges are also concerned at all levels, are also not bad at all. One That's can better. economically but, survive also. But at any for, a first, but for uh, a first generation lawyer, what will be the most? Uh, so there are exams. For first generation lawyer like you, young man, you can always uh, take those entrance examination and uh, qualify. And then God helping you, God willing and uh, luck helping you, you, you can get it. <laughs> Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you so much for your advice. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to see you. Thank you, uh, Rahul. Uh, next person uh, to raise hand is uh, Hemlata. Hemlata, please. Okay. This, this tax bar is not leaving you wherever you go. <laughs> they don't leave me in the court also. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hemlata. Good evening, you? Good evening, my lord, sir. Uh, Sheena, whether you know it or not, Hemlata is a very good uh, painter artist also. <laughs> I don't know that. Painting. I, I don't know that. All the artistic minded people stay together. They exclude people like me. <laughs> Birds of the uh, same feathers flock together. Yes, my lord. My question is that, my lord, sir, having observed your logic for quite a long time, we as a lawyers, tax lawyers, feel that drafts of an issue within the minutes of the lawyer's narration is your specialty. Was it developed as a lawyer or after becoming a judge, my lord? Uh, Pick up uh, as an art, of course, is there with you as a lawyer also, but you can display it only as a judge. <laughs> the, the, the clients would never appreciate whether you have picked up the point very quickly or not. His concerns. How do you pick up? How do you draft? How do you present? Is none of his concerns. But then, as a judge, uh, uh, I feel yes, that uh, if you can pick up the point early and with the little more assistance from the competent lawyers, uh, you can decide more number of cases. Mm. I think the speed should not kill the quality, but yes. the speed, if you can uh, keep with the, the quality, yes. uh, then it's good, then it's not yes. bad. Otherwise, why would you have thought of bullet trains other than the ordinary passenger trains? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. It is an appreciation, not a criticism. <laughs> so much appreciation, you have appreciation. It's our appreciation, my lord. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, my lord. Thank you, my lord. Thank you, Thank you Hemlata. Uh, next person to ask something would be Swaminathan. Swaminathan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, standing counsel, senior standing counsel. Yes. Good evening, Lachip. Hello. My question will be a very silly question, but uh, you have to bear with me. Having done CA and CS, uh, why you have not done your caste accountancy? Because everyone we used to feel that I'm a triplet. Oh that was just not done. That was just a miss I made. <laughs> no, because you would have get the exemption of all these papers. You have, you have to write only mostly three, eight yeah, or uh, very minimum if, papers. If I, did, if I did cost accountancy also, perhaps you would not find me in the Madras High Court. I would have been a corporate CEO somewhere. <laughs> but good question. And but that is yes, question. one thing I really feel, feel as missing. Because uh, some of my friends who are CACS had done cost accountancy also, but they are continuing to practice either as a uh, uh, chartered accountants or have joined corporate world. They, none of them, I believe, to my knowledge at least, has come in law field and then either being a leading. But there are many CA good leading senior lawyers. Ganesh has Ganesh. Harish Salvi is also CA for that matter. I know. Uh, uh, so yes, I did not do just as a matter of chance. Otherwise, I would have. Would have done very easily. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Swaminathan. The next question, a slightly interesting question. I don't know whether it is taken from your life story. And this is also by the tax bar, by this uh, gentleman, rather pesty gentleman called N.V. Balaji. Is Balaji there? <laughs> N.V. Balaji, <laughs> are you there? Yeah. Wilson, will you put N.V. Balaji on? Yes, sir. He's there. Uh, I'm trying to connect him. Balaji. 
and uh, Balaji is also a CA turned into lawyer. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Which is why his question is very very surprising. Some no, connected sir, he's issue. Oh, he's not. Oh yeah, he's, he's here. He's here. Ah, okay. You have to. Yeah, I'm there. I was not able to unmute. Ah, Quite okay. interesting to see uh, various oh, facets good. of uh, your lordship. Yeah. Balaji, you can ask your question directly. Don't yes. make me the scapegoat. <laughs> uh, I have uh, only one thing. Uh, yeah. What is the role of the chartered accountant in you in delivering judgments? Okay. Uh, as such, nothing. But yes, uh, as Himlata also mentioned, the point and understand the accounting part of any controversy. Like uh, when I decided that this uh, uh, winding up petitions of Vijay Malia's two companies in Bangalore, there were very interesting arguments on the balance sheet and uh, how the assets and sources of funds in the balance sheet, as uh, we would know, uh, were going down the line in uh, the period of five, six last years, which we dealt with. Uh, the lawyers felt very comfortable because I could appreciate the trend of the figures in the uh, SS turning NPAs uh, over a period of five, six years. And uh, that helped me in writing the judgment also uh, very quickly. So a hundred pages judgment came out within a period of two weeks or three weeks only. Uh, after we concluded the arguments, a battery of lawyers appeared there. And uh, then I discussed the balance sheet figures also in the uh, judgment also. And interestingly, the uh, picture on the front page of the annual reports of the company, where initially it was a green tree, which in the later year became a dry tree. I don't know why he chose also those pictures on the front of his balance sheet. Then I mentioned uh, that uh, one can see the trend of the falling company's net worth even on the face of the balance sheet also. <laughs> so that is how you as chartered accountant uh, can sometimes reflect uh, in your judgments as a judge of high court also. So that helps, yes. Particularly when the accounting aspects of the tax matters are involved. Having heard you this, I should say, as a chartered accountant who is appearing before uh, your lordship, uh, in yes. fact, uh, we have to be more careful because we know what is in your mind as an accountant too. <laughs> so that is what Shriram was saying, that you are a combination of an artist and a chartered accountant. <laughs> so that, that is just the thing which I gave to you in the balance sheet of uh, Malia Group. Yeah. So nice to hear you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Malaji. And uh, uh, so finally, uh, there's one more question that's come by private chat. It says that uh, the tax field is for the income oriented uh, lawyers, I presume. Has it helped you uh, with your legal services authority work when you see the poor and the needy? No, voice, voice is breaking. I couldn't hear you properly. Uh, my voice was Can breaking. Can you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, it's clear. Can you hear me now? Can you repeat kindly? I'm audible now? Uh, yes, yes. Sir, you're fine. Okay. The tax field is basically for income oriented lawyers. Okay. Has it helped you uh, when you, uh, in your legal services authority work, when you see the poor and the needy? Ah. That seems to be the exact question. I don't know how it is a question, but uh, income oriented people are on the bar side of the field. Nah? As a judge, uh, <laughs> I am not at all income oriented judge. But anyways, uh, as a chairperson of the legal service authority, uh, we are, uh, I think we have, after I took over uh, in 18 November uh, 18, uh, we have tried to spread not only the awareness of the various social welfare schemes to the masses, uh, but we have, I have also ensured by visiting various districts and uh, prompting them to undertake the work of a link between the beneficiary, poor person, and the government uh, agency which distributes those welfare schemes uh, things, including care. So even in COVID times, uh, recent past, last three, four months, 
we have ensured that the various uh, welfare scheme including the food items and medicines and medical help and assistance in the passes for uh, transportation are undertaken by our district level legal service authority and paralegal volunteers effective manner so uh, and we have been sending reports to nalsa also so uh, of course nothing as a being a chartered accountant or a commercial side person being a judge being there has done anything special but the only thing is the management of the things uh, which various district level uh, service authorities do i think i can have a more comprehensive reporting system from them uh, knowing little bit of management also so i put i keep my member secretary always on the toes and all the deputy secretaries of the districts also on the toes for constant reporting what is going on with the pictures we have whatsapp groups of which i am also member and i keep on either consulting them or thanking them or sometimes pulling them up also why it is not happening so this is how it is helped okay so ultimately we've come to the end and probably the last two questions which probably which are very important uh, to everybody among in your opinion among various qualities which is the quality that you think that a judge should possess uh humility and patience humility and patience i would say patience is of course uh, sine qua non and humility is that you just should never pose that i know everything and uh, about everything about your case also he you should uh, uh listen allow the lawyer to give his view point his uh, facts in his own manner of course he can uh, verify and cross check but then uh, knowing everything about a particular brief or everything about the law also is just an impossibility therefore uh, humility of uh, not sh showing that you know everything is one and patience to listen and then decide is another okay and uh, effectively the last uh, torpedo aimed at you okay uh, just the way uh, that was humility and patience are the, the qualities that should be there uh, in abundance in a judge what do you think is a quality that a junior lawyer should possess a apart from hosting webinars <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a that is a covid period uh, good academic exercise i would say and good interaction we were talking about relationship between bar and bench Correct. i think these kind of things uh, bring that up. up opens yeah. you up and uh, yeah. you make better friends uh, yeah true while discharging duty as a judge or as a lawyer in the court hall uh, perhaps uh, is not uh, affected adversely at least by these things if at all it is affected it is at first uh, affected positively so that is not a bad idea so what at do you all, think is a quality that a junior uh, lawyer should possess a, a junior lawyer uh, uh, i feel again the, though it may be very orthodox or repetitive kind of thing uh, the devotion of time in the senior's office to render the hard work which a brief requires is uh, somehow i feel these young lawyers uh, uh, have to come up little more to the expectation of the judges and for that uh, spending good time in the senior's office or on the brief or on the law itself is very necessary the superficial knowledge of facts or law or statute provision does not help just taking a pre previous brief or making a similar kind of case on the basis of that does not help because a judge a judge always tests you how much you know about the case and the law and that is obvious in two three questions uh, with the experience of a judge within two three questions the judge would know how much preparation you have done for the case so unless you are prepared thoroughly you will be exposed and uh, two three bad exposures in a court hall makes an image i think in legal profession for particularly for juniors i would say image in this profession counts very much so therefore you try to please build up your image by uh, your hard work which all have been telling you and that hard work should show on the Uh, case when you stand at the bar and that would show in no time within within 5 minutes the judges 
by and large would know how much you are prepared with the case. Uh, quite a few judges, quite a few lawyers have appeared on this session of ours and many of them have spoken about many qualities that uh, lawyers should have with specific reference to junior lawyers. But this, uh, this particular statement of yours, according to me, is an outstanding piece of advice to young lawyers because it not only recognizes their hard work, uh, integrity, uh, knowledge, intelligence, etc., it also says that your image in the from the point of view of the bench or from the point of view of the onlookers is very very important and therefore it has to be in a proper form i think that's a wonderful uh, piece of advice so, so we've come to the end and uh, what can i say uh, you've been uh, candid you've been humorous uh, and for a change, there has been a judge who's been seriously talented even on the show. I'm sure that henceforth lawyers coming to the second court will have a slightly different view, of, <laughs> radically different view of you. They would, uh, in, this, in these times of uh, the coronavirus and COVID-19, I think we were able to take off the mask from in front of you. And look into the person that you are. They will you have unmasked me. You have unmasked me. Unmasked you. They will now look at you as the judge under the canopy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, it was a pleasure hosting you. We had uh, we had uh, good fun. I would say uh, hosting you. I hope you had e this an is, equal amount of fun. This is the most most interesting webinar I've so far done, and I'm very happy that you kept me on and off the track in such a beautiful manner. Yeah, I think the other profession you can choose is TV anchor. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, you can earn equally well there also. <laughs> it has been great uh, to be here. And though I could not see faces, but I believe many must have heard. And uh, a very, I wish them all good luck. And very, I think uh, COVID period, the work volume was reduced. Soon, I think, uh, subject to full court taking a decision on 3rd uh, July, we should resume our normal working in July. And uh, I feel sometimes very bad that uh, with very less amount of work also because of Corona overriding factor, uh, we draw a full salary. <laughs> and uh, somehow I feel it is not justified. But then uh, we should try to do more when we resume working, all of us. And as you all know, judges and lawyers taken together only can contribute to the out of this institution and by wishing you all the very best for all these times good health and uh, good working when we resume working thank you stay safe come, uh, and have a good time with your family and enjoy yourself thank you sir thank you okay. see you right, sir.